opening night with actor, comedian, Kevin Pollack. Curator of the Folk Sex Museum, Evelyn J. Morse. Police officers, Gary and O. Smarty. Plus tonight's band, The K. Thanks for showing up. How about it for the cage, folks? They're rocking tonight. How you doing, Mark? How you Mark? Now, you guys are called the cage, huh? Yep. Where'd you get that name? Yeah, um, that's a secret. We're not going to tell you. You know it. <laughs> You're cagey. Where yeah. are you from? Uh, we're from Dublin, Ireland. Get out. Yeah. Well, we got, we have all kinds of, uh, we have a couple ladies from uh, Great Britain over here. You're from Scotland, Wales. We could actually have a rugby match right here, eh? Or a fight. How long you guys... <laughs> <laughs> like there's a difference, Mark. Come on. <laughs> I've been in a scrum. And speaking of scrums, let's meet Eric Charles Borman. He's right over here. <laughs> let's bring out our first guest, shall we? He is the new hardest working man in Shell Bennis. He's an actor. He's a comedian. And better yet, he's here tonight. Let's welcome Kevin Pollack. <laughs> It's not great today to do. It's good to have you here, Kevin. Ah, very nice to be here. You've had a great career and, and are continuing to have it. Don't well, you? thank you. Don't mean to sound like it's over. Uh, when did you first decide you wanted to be a comedian? Uh, well, I was uh, 10 years old and uh, standing in front of the stereo. My mom had brought home Bill Cosby's first album. Uh, and I was listening to the Noah and the Ark routine a hundred times over and over again. And as a ten-year-old, I just wanted to play. So I got up and what is now known as lip-syncing, although at the time I didn't know what I was doing other than playing. And my mom came by and thought this was hysterical. So I started doing it in talent shows and variety shows, and that became a career. Did you win any, like, $50 gift certificates? Hey, maybe I did, all right? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, the, you know, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and a lot of comedians have a hard time going from stand-up to acting, but you've done uh, great. You're doing serious stuff, A Few Good Men, Avalon, funny roles. Which do you like doing better, funny or serious stuff? Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very annoying cliche, but the quality of material seems to be the underlying factor for me, uh, whether it's comedy or drama. I think, without question, my forte would probably be comedy, although I've been able to get away with some of this dramatic stuff. No, uh, the, the dramatic stuff is great. You, I thought you were great in A Few Good Men, and Avalon was great, too. It was... Yeah! 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 Uh, someone told me you just bought a house. They did? Yeah. <laughs> wow. As literally, actually, the bass player told me you just bought a house. Uh, would you recommend that? That's a... Buying the house? Yeah. Buying the house, yes. Um, you fixing it up? Well, you know, you have to do the carpet and the plumbing and the painting and the landscaping, and I could be another hour talking about that. So I'm basically Mo, the Jew foreman, <laughs> looking over these people, and, uh, and the, the painters are from South Korea, and the landscapers from Poland, and the plumbers are from El Salvador. So I, it's like the UN going on at the house there, and I'm just mediating and, and trying. And they all seem to understand each other, which is very annoying, but... Uh, they speak construction. I think it, it's a common language. Yeah, they speak... This is yeah. I think what they speak. <laughs> and they all know how to say yes. Yeah, yes. yeah sure. Uh, what movies do you have coming up? I have two coming out. Uh, one with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Antonio Banderas and Mia Farrow and Paul Mazursky and a bunch of other great people called wow. Miami. And the other one is called Canadian Bacon from Michael Moore who did um, Roger, Roger and Me. Me. Is that and a documentary as well? No, it's a feature film. It's a, it's a fiction. It's sort of a Dr. Strange lovish thing. Uh, Alan Alda plays the President of the United States. I play his right-hand man, the National Security Advisor. And I convince him in an election year he needs to have a war to boost his ratings. Sure, you gotta. Right. So we invite the Russians back, and they say, don't be a sort of wiener, you know. <laughs> and uh, I convince him that uh, Canada cannot be trusted. They're not only subversive and hoarding ice cubes, but that they're... Uh, <laughs> You know, they have anti-American acts like canceling the Miss Canada contest. That was just plain wrong. Yes, it was. And I don't think anyone has called them on the carpet for it. I'm glad well, you're going to do Well, we do so in this movie. Uh, do some impressions. The first time I see, would you? Sure. Because I, I, I uh, have been following your stand-up career for a long time, and, and I think you do some great impressions. What's, uh, do, do some. Well, um, Your favorite. My favorite. Well, I like to do some more esoteric ones, like Albert Brooks is always fun. Is it me, Mark? Am I crazy? Is it? Uh, <laughs> 
I swear that this is very exciting. It really is. People are in shorts and they're watching us. This is good. <laughs> Did you ever see him do stand up? Oh, sure. I buddy. heard he was great. He's the funniest man in America. For my money, anyways. Uh, Alan Arkin is another favorite of mine. I really enjoy doing him. Let me just say, <laughs> this, uh, this studio, I, I did an early, an early production here. Uh, we were all dressed in uh, monk costumes. And it was very strange because these same people were watching. And I, I, was a, <laughs> I was astounded when I came out and saw that they were here. Well, but Kirk? I, William Shatner? William Shatter is my favorite, of course, because he created pause acting. That's where you pause for no reason. <laughs> is there anybody you've tried to do and you can't? Well, them? yeah. I mean, some people are difficult uh, until they do a very specific role, like Al Pacino. I could never really get until he did Scent of a Woman, and then everyone was doing a hoo ha, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hoo-ha! One of America's greatest actors wins an Academy Award for doing an impression of Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> boy, I said, boy, get me a bourbon. <laughs> Any yeah. other impressions you want to do? Um, well, uh, who, uh, anyone. I mean, I, I, I don't... Who do you have in mind? I don't know. You used to do the, the Star Trek thing where you do all the guys in rapid succession? Well, I, I did... Uh, yeah, there were, uh, there were different characters that had played, like, Dudley Moore was a drunken Scotty down in the, in the, <laughs> you know, instead of, I uh, got no power, was, we run out of booze, sir, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when this happens. <laughs> Stop it. I don't like appreciation, I don't. <laughs> Where's your, oh, you're over here, I'm oh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> I thought you had a double, a stand-in, but no, it's actually you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be right back with more of Kevin Pollack and also learn about the historical If you or someone you know has herpes, then this is important to watch because the product I'm going to share with you is guaranteed to work. It's called Azurex. There is no cure for herpes. But there is something guaranteed to stop outbreaks, provide soothing relief, and accelerate healing. In this attack pack, there are five individual swabs. They are easy to carry and easy to use. Just snap it to activate it. If you feel an outbreak coming on, apply Azurex after that first tingle and immediately feel the relief. So if you're looking for something that's powerful, natural, and really works, then order Azurex now. trying to increase the uh, the quotient of civility on the show and to do that our next guest is going to help uh, she is the curator if you can believe this of the Museum of Phone Sex in Albuquerque New Mexico that's what I thought it's a real place please welcome Ms. Evelyn J. Morse Bring her out. Nice to hear you again. <laughs> nice to have you here, Evelyn. Thank you very much. How All right. are you? We got to start with the uh, wonderful sounding group you have here. Thanks very much. Thank you. Why does phone sex need a museum? It seems kind of silly. <laughs> well, it's not really silly at all. You have to understand that the phone sex. Uh, museum is just a way that we really pull people in. Mm -hmm. It's more about um, the interaction uh, of people uh, today. In, in our society today, it is a steam valve. <laughs> it is a way for people to release uh, a pressure uh, talking about sex. Uh, messages have been delivered for years back and forth sure. between no, I'm very serious. I know you're being serious. Uh, be between kings and uh, queens, in ancient Rome particularly, there was a lot of it going on. Messages going back and forth. You know, you, you seem so amused by this. I know it's an amusing subject because sex should be fun. And that's what we're trying to you know well and i guess a museum you know there's a there's a museum of anesthesiology in hollywood and a museum of tupperware 
That's so true. we find this really well, there's no a wax museum, for God's sakes. Yes, and it's terrible. Have you been there? <laughs> it's all. Is there a Kevin Pollock in the wax museum? Well, let's hope not. <laughs> so um, what yes, kind of stuff do you have in the Fonsec Museum? We have a number of exhibits. You know, we're, we're very young. We're new. We just started. How long have you been open? Uh, about four weeks. <laughs> Great. And uh, we moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Albuquerque. Why? Well, we were having some problems there. <laughs> what kind of problems? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why he finds this so amusing, unless, He's of an course, imp. unless, of course, uh -huh. we've made some phone calls that were not... <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. We encourage that. Have you ever? Perhaps we could put that in the museum because I know that you're a movie star. What? I, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, thought about calling. I just, now is, is this the, where you get a number in the back of a magazine and call in a woman who's frying eggs and then she's getting hot on the phone? Or is this actually phoning a mate and having sex on the phone? Is that what you this is You could about? do that. Most people do not prefer to do that, to call a mate. But uh, well, we encourage it. We encourage it in the 90s, certainly. Uh, uh, but uh, there's all sorts of things like that. We do have a hall of 976, uh, which you can go and you can stand and listen to a number of booths. And you can listen to the Large and Lovely line. You can listen to the Hot Babes line. Uh, you can listen to no, Madonna has a booth there. Oh, um, of course. Of course. Is it I, a popular she's booth? not very popular anymore, is she? Good. I hear a groan in the audience. Well, and you'll hear it on her phone line, too, if you call it. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, teasing me now. I'm not teasing. You're I, teasing me now. You're teasing me. I just me. think it's amazing that, you know, 10 years ago there was no phone sex. Why do you think it's so prevalent now? Well, you know, right now in the 90s, uh, uh, the non contact intimacy that is going on, people are afraid, there are things going around. But people need to have a release. A steam valve. A steam valve, as it were. That's what, exactly the way, uh, the way we talk about it at the museum. Uh, and they need this sort of release. They need this sexual interaction, but they don't want to have to posture after consum consummation and say, ooh, I really liked you. You really liked me. Could we get together? They, it's easier to do it on the phone. Do you suggest uh, safe sex while on the phone? I, uh, you know. <laughs> That's a real, you know, common question. Some people have said, do you put a condom on the phone? I would just use a speakerphone. <laughs> you know, you're not. And it's free. You could. That way you could get more people involved. Sure. But it's just really. <laughs> now, is this a new? It seems like it's a new thing. I know it's very new. It, it is new. Phone sex is new and non-contact. Phone Sex is new, but but non-contact sexuality has been going on for years. All over the world, or all just over here? the. I have with me. I brought with me out here. Am I sitting on it? A missive. Um, where a is missive? it? A missive. Yes. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, this is from 1842, wow. as you can see. Yes, it is. And it's a telegram that's it's burnt. Dearest Mimsy, stop. My hand is on your thigh. Stop. And, well, the rest is a little burned. Yeah. But you see that? This was on a stagecoach. And, uh, is that one of the exhibits in the museum? It is. We have it under glass. I brought it on the show. I have to return this immediately, of course. It's insured. Sure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and there, you know, in Islam today, uh, phone sex is starting. I know this is hard to believe, but it, it, it's true. And I actually brought a copy of that with me as well. As you see, I came very prepared. Yes, you did. Um, well, this is a transcript of a recent phone call that we, we recorded in Tehran. It was actually sent to us. And uh, the male voice, voice was saying, what are you wearing? And the female voice was saying, a floor-length burlap wrap, a wall burnoose and an eight-foot scarf and a calf-high military boots. And the male voice says, Allah is merciful. <laughs> So you see, it doesn't necessarily have to be in and out, in and out, in oh. and out. Well, I'm just what? saying. What, what was this? <laughs> That's steamy. <laughs> That's a little steamy. You but, like um, Islamic women, don't you, Eric? Yes, I have called the services myself. <laughs> you know, you look now, so familiar to me. Where do I know him from? You may just know the voice. I know the 976 voice. 976 self is what I call him. <laughs> Can I ask you, Mr. Have you ever made a phone call on a phone sex line? Oh, sure. Of course. Sure. He's a 3 dollars a minute. That's what I remember. 
he remembers. He's a very My bill was two fifty. <laughs> very healthy man. <laughs> Brevity, thy name is Eric. Uh, what would be your favorite exhibit in your museum? That's a tough question. I'm known for asking the hard-hitting questions. My so. favorite uh, exhibit, I would have to say, um, it would have to be the Alexander Graham Bell exhibit. The guy who which, invented the phone, Alexander? Alexander Graham Bell uh, invented the telephone, and it was also the very first sex phone call that we had. The first phone call was a sex phone yes, call? Yes, and I brought a clip of that with us today. It's I've with heard some it armed guards in the back, because it's very rare. You know, there's only one. <laughs> and I brought it. It's back with us. And Tom, I, can we, uh, this is the first phone call ever made on a telephone. First phone call ever made on a telephone. Can yes. you, Tom, you have the that? The first voice you hear will be Alexander Graham Bell. All right, play it. Come here, Watson, I need you. And now you'll hear Mr. Watson. And I need you, Alexander. <laughs> That's amazing. We're going to be right back, and we'll need two of San Francisco's finest. Don't go away. That's got to be worth a lot of money. It's My neck, Eric, please. Not when that one we're on. That's bad. Uh, my next guest and his partner have their own unique way of keeping the streets of San Francisco safe. From the San Francisco Police Department, please welcome officers Bob Geary and Brendan O'Smarty. Nice to see you. Kevin? Great in that movie. Oh, thanks Evelyn. very much. <laughs> that thing you did. Uh, welcome. Well, thank you. Good to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here. Brandon feels like he's got a little bit of a voodasia. And I said, goes, what's voodasia? And he goes, well, I don't recall this experience before. <laughs> Isn't that deja vu? Yeah, but he thinks it's deja vu. And it should be... Voodasia. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you too. Yeah, yeah. So now you're you're an actual. You both are actual yeah. legal San Francisco policemen. That partners. we are. That we are. In fact, Brendan was voted uh, to be my partner last uh, November. It's been last six months now. Uh, the people voted in San Francisco to have us as partners. Was, so it's been very. Uh, was there some trouble originally because? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, in the audience must know this, or maybe they've seen it. Uh, we were told to use creative, ingenious methods to handle beat situations as police officers. So I decided, why not have a puppet as a partner? It sounds reasonable, huh? Sure. So I had Brendan with me for like a year and a half. It was going along well. The police department liked it, and, and the citizens of San Francisco and the tourists liked it. And then one day a captain said, get rid of him. He makes the department look stupid, and uh, we don't want dummies around here. So I put Brendan on the ballot, and the voters agreed, and we're partners again. That's got to make you feel good, huh, Brendan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he does have Carl Malden's nose. I would see how he would be <laughs> good for the gig. Bite your tongue. Uh, I, I find him absolutely delightful, the little one. <laughs> Brendan. Hi. Delightful. Uh, what happens, have you ever actually made a collar with Brendan with you? Uh, no, we've, uh, we've broken, you know, fights like in a bar scene. A, How would you do that? A small fight. Well, he would go in there. It, well, what we did is the one time, the singular time, he went in there and ordered uh, one person to take a chill pill and the other one to freeze like a popsicle. And they all looked at him and they looked at me and they looked at each other and they start laughing. So what it did is, believe it or not, it disarmed them uh, and we left the scene with a negative connect with the police department rather than a, uh, I mean a positive rather than a negative connect with the police mm -hmm. department. Has he ever spent any time on the island of bad boys? Uh, no, no. Is that from uh, Pinocchio? Pinocchio. Yeah. It was a late yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happens if uh, you, you get called for a fire? Huh? If, I, there's, if there's I, a fire. I would, I would leave him in a radio car because you notice he didn't want to be a puppet of the cloth. And he didn't want to be a firefighter, but he wanted to be a police officer, and he's scared of fires. Sure. Yeah. I could understand that. He keeps looking at Kevin. Now, you're, I had a question for him, but I, I, Go there might be a better way to ask it. Go ahead. Because I, I do impressions, Lieutenant Colombo, an, an officer, you as do? you know. But Go I wanted to it. relate to you on So let me just, let me ask you a question. I don't mean to bother you. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just that, ask you? Kevin, that is really a gross looking thing. I'm sorry. It is disgusting. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Let me ask you a question. 
What? Now, uh, the uniform is very snappy, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. You sure I'm not bothering you? No. <laughs> there we talk? go. <laughs> Wait, stop that. <laughs> Don't go away. Oh, no, you two. Welcome back. We are just about out of time. I wanted to thank our guests. The very funny Mr. Kevin Pollack. Yeah. yeah. Evelyn Jane Morris. Yes. And of course, officers Bob Geary and Brendan O'Smarty. That's it. Good night, America.